Hello friends, James Stevenson back with part 25 of my 2022 Q3 Tesla earnings forecast video review series. Perhaps my co-host Loki will join me uh, because I have a little milk bone here for him. There he is. Okay, and right back to his dog bed. That's a little prima donna right there. He's, uh, he's a little camera shy today and doesn't want to come out of his trailer, but... Uh, let's get right back to where we left off in part 24 at the bottom of uh, this section where we were looking at the uh, automotive revenue excluding lease revenue and cash, uh, excluding leased revenue and regulatory credits revenue and lease deliveries. This is my first video of the day. I'm, I'm, I'm warming up still. All right, so there's a huge gap in my model after that section that we just left. We left off talking about non-GAAP EPS excluding regulatory credits in the previous video. So if you watch that one, you are all set up to watch what comes next. So here is my per diluted share section. What's going on here? <laughs> I. There, there, there's so many different numbers that you could show on a per diluted share basis. I figured I'll just nuke it all at one time in this section. I'll make everything uh, that I have in my forecast model on a per diluted share basis, and then it'll all be here. Uh, and then once I had that, it gave me an idea for a chart, which I will show you in this video. So uh, what's going on here? Well, uh, to use as our example column V, which is where we've seen our 2022 Q3. Let me zoom in here more so you can see what's going on better. Okay, here's column V, 2022 Q3. This is the first uh, quarter that I'm forecasting at this point. These are actuals. And if they don't look familiar, that's because the stock split between Q2 and Q3 results being reported. So uh, these were more like, you know, uh, almost $15 worth of revenue or, you know, a little over $16 worth of revenue per diluted share back in Q1. Then that problem Q2 happened with the Shanghai lockdowns. And here we are in Q3. Uh, with a, a promising Q4 lying ahead of us. Okay, so what this shows is all of the dollar amounts on the income statement if you just divide them by the diluted share count. So, you know, 3.3 billion shares or whatever the number is. You get these per share amounts. And I've got them for the revenues up top and I've got them for all the expenses below, which is the same format as the income statement, exactly precisely the same format as the income statement. I'm just duplicating that section down here. Okay, so uh, that gets us to net income of $1.25. That's the gap uh, net income per diluted share number. And here's those share counts that we were talking about. And if you do the share count on a per diluted share basis, you get one share per share. <laughs> so it's good that in all of the columns, it's 1.000 on the diluted shares outstanding column. Uh, so you, you can tell that what we're doing here is just everything uh, divided by the diluted share count. So this is kind of like a check figure, kind of. Uh, letting you know what's going on here. Uh, ignore these. They're not telling you anything meaningful. And then down here, what I've done is I've grouped these into buckets that are better for making a chart out of. Uh, so some of these are just linked directly to what's above. Uh, some of these... So let's see what the research and development line is telling us. So this is U1683 minus U1728. 1728 is down here. Oh, it's backing out the stock comp. So we can just show the stock compensation on its own row, regardless of which income statement line item that uh, stock-based compensation expense hit. 
Um, so that's also what's uh, getting backed out here from the automotive cost of sales. So each of these lines are showing the expense net of stock-based compensation so that we can get to a non-GAAP EPS number first and then deduct the stock comp from that to get to the GAAP EPS number. All right, so what is this? And I think that's all there is here, yeah. So those are the only lines that are good for making a chart out of. Let's take a look at the chart. Uh, so I'm calling this an EPS stack. Now this chart was not in my um, forecast thread, the 30 tweet forecast thread that I tweeted out on August the 19th. But uh, you get one more colorful chart out of my video series. I told you I was done showing you colorful charts, but you get this bonus content uh, because it helps to understand why we even looked at what we just looked at. So this looks like it's one chart here, but it's actually two charts that I have cleverly uh, diabolically overlapped over each other. So there's the one that does the revenue, well, there's the one that does the expenses, which is this one, and there's the one that does the revenue, which is this one. And if you uh, know what you're doing in Excel, you can overlap those just right so that they look like they're one chart. Uh, so here are Tesla's revenues per diluted share. We just saw these numbers. I've pasted them in a table over here to the right. And I'll show you what we're talking about. Remember these numbers right here, 609 through $1.25. If I go back to my detailed model section, hey look, here they are, 609 to $1.25. It's the same section that I called the data for the EPS stacked bar chart, uh, just totaling these up into groups that make sense. Uh, SGNA is throwing out Elon's stock comp and other stock comp. Um, and then this taxes and other expense line is solving for whatever must be left to get you to the $1.36 of non-GAAP EPS that we know we had because we have a row 1733 down here, a non-GAAP earnings line that is just the total non-GAAP earnings dollars divided by the diluted earnings per share. So we're backing into uh, that number. So the revenues are what you see over here, kind of like the same idea as that, uh, how does Tesla make its average dollar of revenue and spend its average dollar of revenue chart um, set. So this one is just showing, okay, Here's where Tesla got its revenue for this quarter, from automotive mostly, from energy a little bit, and then from all other, you know, including used car sales and insurance and uh, Tesla service and uh, service not covered under warranty, uh, all that stuff. Then next to it is how did Tesla spend uh, all of this revenue. So mostly it spent it on factories that made the automobiles and the energy products and delivered all that service and bought those vehicles that got sold, used, etc. The, the Tesla merchandise store uh, online, right? Uh, then these small ones are the little costs that are left over. So you've got research and development, here, uh, 19 cents per diluted share. SGNA, 25 cents per diluted share. Uh, everything else combined, 11 cents per share. And then the um, stock based compensation also happens to be 11 cents in this quarter in Q3, is what I'm forecasting. So, what does that leave? It leaves $1.25 of gap earnings. Uh, and $1.36 of adjusted non-GAAP EPS. So this $1.25 is really the GAAP EPS. I've got the wrong label here. So you get to see me make an edit on the fly here. So that's GAAP EPS of $1.25 adjusted 
non-GAAP EPS of $1.36 that includes the stock comp um, or that adds back the stock comp that was already removed from the GAAP EPS. I know that's confusing, but <laughs> this chart was really an effort on my part to try to make that less confusing. Uh, under the GAAP rules, you have to consider the non-cash stock compensation as though it was a real cash expense and not just creating shares. Uh, but Wall Street only cares about the non-GAAP uh, earnings, which are the EPS after adding that stock compensation back. All right, that is all I have for this video. So if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you'd like to support my channel, you can do that on Patreon or you can join my YouTube channel. There's a join button you can click. And uh, that's very recent. YouTube only just made that available to me. So I figured I would turn that on in case that is your preferred method of supporting content you uh, like and believe in. And I will see you in part 26.